Yo! What is up, everyone? Are you using SQL Server? Guess what we're announcing here today? The GA of SQL Server 2025. It's got some amazing features, amazing capabilities, and guess what? Something even better. I have with me some people would consider a legend. Mr. Bob Ward. Baja, thanks for joining us. Thanks so much for having me. Tell us about what does what this, this release, this launch of SQL Server 2025 mean? It's a great message to the world that SQL Server is not dead. <laughs> it's alive and well, and that we still believe, honestly, that customers want to run SQL Server on premises still. But we also have so many yeah. great ways to run SQL Server in the cloud. We announced this last November at Ignite as a private preview, here we are a year later doing general availability. And it's really important to our industry and our community to let everybody know when this thing is releasing. This is why last year we called it SQL Server 2025. Because we want everybody to know that by the end of 25 calendar year, we would have a general availability product. And yeah. it really all starts with this you know, tagline, AI ready. But not just AI ready, but enterprise AI ready. Because enterprise it's not that we're just AI building ready. AI into the product, but we're doing it in a way that enterprises trust us from a secure point of view, and that includes being able to you know, run SQL Server ground or cloud. I get the AI part, but what should I expect from this ground cloud? If I think about it just visually, I think about yeah. areas of what I call innovation for SQL Server. Like everybody just knows we're traditionally a great relational database, right? Security and all those yep. kind of things. But we're going to put AI features inside the engine. We're going to let you access AI where you want to, whether it's just totally on premises mm -hmm. or connect to a cloud. And then you have these developer features that are crazy amazing, which allows you, by the way, to run things totally on premises like JSON support or use like a REST API call inside the engine to connect to a cloud server somewhere. Uh -huh. And then Patrick, Fabric I mean, is so important to our customers and to Fabric customers. Yeah. And so SQL 25 supports Fabric mirroring in a really new and innovative way. So that's kind of really my, what I call areas of innovation. Things that are just not normally part of a relational database. For people that don't know what Fabric mirroring is, you take your SQL Server and you can connect it to Fabric and it'll automatically, with a few little clicks, take that data from on-premises and automatically get that data over into Fabric so it's available in the center of the universe Fabric and then Power BI can use it. <laughs> <But> Patrick, <laughs> a, lot of our, a lot of our customers still want to know, like, do you innovate the engine? There are over 40 plus new features in the engine. You know, one of my mentors at Microsoft was David Campbell, what an amazing person. And he always told mm -hmm. me before he left, he says, Bob, make sure that you add features to the engine because anything you do innovative wise, if you don't have a great engine, none of this stuff matters, right? So we have a lot yeah, of cool stuff yeah. in the engine. And then if you think about things like Azure Arc, you know, we allow you to connect SQL Server to Azure to do things like manage identity with Entre Authentication. Patrick, SSMS, one of the most popular tools in the world, has got yes. new versions, including co-pilot capabilities built into SSMS. We've got benchmarks we always announce. We've got optimizations on the engine for the latest hardware. People still don't know that we run on Linux, containers, Kubernetes, so all the stuff you see here works in those environments. So wow. overall, I've got excitement from even some new people that have not looked at SQL. Yeah. And then I've got traditional yeah. customers that are just excited about everything we're putting together. You keep throwing out AI. Yeah. In SQL Server, the last version of SQL I use, not even going to say, there was no AI involved in this. But tell me about this evolution of bringing AI to SQL Server. I think it's kind of cool if I kind of show you an architecture diagram. Would you like to yeah. see that? Yeah, let me see it. So right. visually, this is how this works. This is why we kind of call it enterprise ready ground to cloud. So that dashed line, that's like your VM, let's say the boundary of your virtual machine. The blue line is the boundary of like SQL Server, your data, the engine, and so forth. So what you mm -hmm. do is you're going to be able to use T-SQL to build what's called a model definition, like an AI embedding model. But we're not going to load the model in SQL Server. We're going to just put metadata out there to access these models. Now, I know this is complicated. It's kind of crazy. But this is where we're giving incredible options to customers. You can actually install AI embedding models, let's say on a popular service like Olama, locally on your mm -hmm. VM, but isolated from the SQL engine. That way, if you're worried about security, it's not touching SQL data, it's not touching the SQL engine, and we'll access the REST. <sighs> Or gotcha. you could actually host those models on a network somewhere in your enterprise. Same thing with REST. So now yeah. we've got this really beautiful story where SQL will access AI models for a concept called vector searching and do mm -hmm. it through REST APIs locally or on a network totally on-prem. Or you can access Foundry. So if you'd like to connect to the cloud, even though you're running on-prem, and access these models in Azure, you can do it, and you can even do it securely with like a managed identity if you want to. And then wow. finally, we'll support local Onyx models. You convert them to Onyx from things like Hugging Face, and we'll access the, the, through the file system of the local machine, but again, still isolated from the SQL engine. And this is just you declaring to us 
which model to use. So it's a pretty cool architecture yeah. to even to start with. To me, what's key is, you know, because people really, really, they, they really care about that data and they want to protect that data and the isolation of SQL away from all of the, you know, the AI. I, I, I think that's going to be really attractive to a lot of customers. And here's the cool thing. That yeah. model definition is the T-SQL statement. Yeah. You have to have a sys admin turn on the ability for somebody to be able to do that. So people have asked me, how yeah. do I turn off AI? The more important question is, how do I turn it on? And so it's not on by default. You take your existing data, like say text data in your database. You then use that model definition with a T-SQL command, which needs security. You will tell us which model you picked. We will behind the scenes talk to that model, get these numbers called embeddings, which are vector numbers. They're floating point yep. numbers that represent your text. We'll store that in a new vector type. Then you're going to turn around and create what's called a vector index, a disk and index on top of the new vector type. It's going to help you do searching. So yep. you've got this all set up and now you want to use something in your app to go smartly search for data. You could Wait. take like a prompt, like a natural language prompt. You could send it through T-SQL to like a stored procedure in SQL Server. You'll generate an embedding number through T-SQL, same procedure, to your model. Now you've got two numbers. You get the number that you're with your prompt, represents your prompt, and you have numbers yep. in your database. And so then you'll use T-SQL to do a vector search. This is a more powerful searching mechanism than, say, full text search. It's all semantic based, yeah. right? Based on AI yeah. technology. Then you can even combine that with other filters, all the great where clauses you already know. And now you've got a full system. You've got ability to do now smart searching all within the security boundaries of SQL Server in your database and using all the latest AI technologies on the model of your choice in a very secure and scalable yeah. fashion. I can truly do a search across my data and say, hey, find me all the stuff that, you know, is yellow bikes. Think about natural language searching of your data. That's really the concept. Yeah, I'm excited about this. You know, this new AI, it's new for a, a mature guy like me. I want to see how this works, Bob. You think you could show us that? I've got demos, as you know. So yeah, let me show you. <laughs> all right, so enough of all this talking. Let's head over to Bob's laptop. I'm connected with SSMS to SQL 25. Let me show you how this works. This is called a model definition. This is an example in T-SQL. I'm connected for free on my laptop using developer edition, using the popular Olama service that's running on my laptop. And I'm going to connect one of these embedding models. But this is just declaring the model I want to use. Now, here's what's cool. I'm going to use what's called the new vector type in my table based on my product descriptions. And I'm going to do a simple insert select of T-SQL to generate these embeddings and store them inside my database. I'm just kind of getting myself started a little bit here. Look how simple this T-SQL statement is. Using just an insert select, using that model definition, I've got these vectors now in my table. Now I want to create a vector index. We have a new T-SQL syntax for this. It's like a different kind of index on top of those numbers that are representing my text data, a semantic meaning of my text data. So now with those numbers in place, I can build a stored procedure like this. A procedure could take in a prompt from an application, and then I'll use T-SQL to generate the number from the prompt, like some phrase that you want to put in, right? And then here's the vector yep. search. So T-SQL is doing all the mathematics for you. And it's pretty cool Jeez. because when you're done, you could then potentially go run a stored procedure that kind of like wraps it all together. So I'd like to go like maybe find products for, look at this phrase here, show me stuff. The word stuff's not in my data anywhere, right? Mm -hmm. But can a natural language model know what that means or even the word extreme? The results are interesting. It's kind of what I want, but the problem is, is that I'm getting back results that are not even in English for my English phrase. Turns out that the embedding model I'm using, which is kind of a free open source version, is not optimized for multiple languages, but I actually have separate different languages in my database. So I'm gonna use Copilot to go in and find out more about these embeddings. I'm like, hey, do you even know about a table I have with embeddings? Copilot can look at my database in SSMS. It can show me what those look like. And then what I can do is I can say, well, why don't you show me what some of these embeddings look like? Show me the top 10 products and the embeddings that go with them that you know about in the database. And as I see these results, it's pretty good because I see that I've got products, but it turns out as a developer, I realize now I've got a multi-language database, but I'm not using a model that supports that. So I've got this problem. So now what I need to do is switch over and use a model that does. All I'm going to do is change the model definition, regenerate the embeddings, and I'm going to use Azure Foundry now because I've got a model in the Foundry that supports and is optimized for multiple languages. So same syntax as before. Not a lot of changes required here. Just go regenerate these embeddings using that same table that I have. I've got the same text data I got in there. 
rebuild this index again on top of that, make a tweak to the procedure to point to this new Azure OpenAI and Foundry model, and now go back and look at the results. And it's really cool now because everything looks really good to me. My prompt in English, yeah. the results look like in English. Patrick, look at this. I took the prompt using Copilot and generated a prompt in Chinese and said, can you just generate the results in Chinese? Without any code nope. changes, it could come back and say, sure, here's your results in Chinese. Uh, that's because wow. I'm using a model now that understands the multiple languages. So with very small changes, I can actually change the model I want to use, optimize for my data and the needs of my app. I just need yeah. to write a little bit of T-SQL and most of us can write T-SQL to get this going, right? This is not hard. And I can, I can bake all this into applications and extend it right. even further. My mind, my mind's blown a little bit. I want to learn more. I'm eager. Maybe, maybe I'm going to be convinced that I should move away and start going back to SQL Server and become a D BA again. I want to learn learn oh. more about this. Where can I go? You mean you yeah. might you, gotta, you might make this the center of the universe now? Is what you're trying to say? We'll see if I can get a jacket like that. Maybe if I get a jacket <laughs> like that, maybe we'll start. I have resources for <laughs> but, you, Patrick. I do. We've got our documentation. We've got blogs. So I'm an open source presenter. All my decks I do in SQL 25. You can just download. You can see those demos yourself and see how it works. If you want to go download SQL Server today, we've got developer edition for free. We've got a standard version of that now. SQL Express. All sorts of great uh, resources for you to get started. With SQL 25. I heard that you, Mr. Bob Ward, we, you have a book on SQL Server 2025. Thank you for asking, Patrick. Oh, so right. SQL Server 2025 yeah, yeah. and Unveiled is now out and available for you. And it's going to cover a very deep dive into all aspects of what I showed you earlier about the amazing story of SQL Server 2025. So excited to have another book come out and then to see the reaction from the industry and hope people can use it as a great learning tool to get started with SQL Server 2025. Well, I will tell you this. I'm not waiting in line to get you to sign my book. I'm going to bring it when I see you the next time and I'll get you to sign it for me. I appreciate it, Bob. Bob, thank you so I'm much for that. coming and hanging out. And you, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, comments, you know what to do. Post it in the comments below. If you want to learn more about Fabric or SQL Server or all the workloads in Fabric, you know what to do. That's probably something flying above my head. And as always, from Bob, Adam, Martha, and myself, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.